every organization has some kind of cyber risk, but how you manage that communication and how that is logged from a governance perspective with regulators, customers, clients, and investors, or even internal staff, that can be a tricky thing to manage and often something we see people get wrong. So carry on watching this video and I'll just run you through some of the tips and tricks in terms of how to manage the communication around cybersecurity risk. As part of our enterprise offering, we help companies manage the governance, internal governance with investors, regulators, internal staff, customers and clients. And there isn't really a lot of magic in terms of tool sets for this. Um, it can literally be a glorified spreadsheet. Now, there's a couple of fundamentals that people quite often get wrong here. So number one is that cybersecurity risk is a thing that we should all be ashamed of. It's not. Nearly every organisation has some kind of cybersecurity risk. Um, number two, it's IT's job to worry about that or the operations folks. That's never the truth. So the reason that we like ISO 27001 and things like that is that it just makes sure that the people who make risk versus cost decisions um, are able to have the knowledge to be able to make those decisions better. Um, so that is often a fallacy. It's the IT or the operations job to sort it out. It's not. Usually cybersecurity risk is a money thing. And quite often the people that distribute the money in the organisation like to sort of point fingers and say, oh, oh I don't know. We didn't know we had this risk. Um, um, so that's something that you, you kind of really need to, to, to have a good governance process in place to make sure that you're managing that cybersecurity risk. And the other th sort of thing that crops up quite a lot that is another fallacy is that we can just bury our head in the sand with ignorance um, and that will get us off if we have a big cyber incident. So that's um, also never the case. So quite often, if you and people are always amazed when we tell them this, um, and I've worked with Deloitte, Accenture, I've worked with global investment banks, I've done this for, for, for quite a long time. Um, you, um, if you have an incident and you're having to look in front of you, customers, regulators and everyone else, pretending that you didn't have that risk in the first place, that's where people really, really get caned. Apology to use a Southern uh, English expression there. Um, that's when you really get in trouble is when there's ignorance. If you have these risks already logged, and there is a management plan to be able to remediate those risks, it's almost impossible for individuals to be culpable. Only, you know, maybe if it's like the worst particular risk you could ever imagine, it's the, it's the making sure that you ha are a good citizen in terms of understanding your risk, and then being able to have some kind of management plan in place to understand what are the criticalities of this risk. So um, in another video that we've also recorded today, uh, we talked about if you have a website that has, and that gets hacked, and um, but it hasn't got any business data or anything critical in there, then if that's vulnerable, your management plan to be, yeah, we're going to upgrade that in the next version of the next web iteration or when the next version of the website's done. You know, you can argue that's particularly not critical um, and not going to take the company out. So you know, just ultimately the advice that we give in these types of situations is to ensure that all of your risk is managed and there is a priority element around it. And the ones that are considered critical to the business, critical to the organisation or to, you know, uh, data protection laws like GDPR, they have a management plan in place and the Usually, this has to be around a budget cycle. So cybersecurity risk can crop up like that. It can be a £50,000 cost to remediate a platform or something like that. Now, you won't always have that budget. And what you, you, know, you, you can't do always is put the organisation in jeopardy by unnecessary costs while you're in a, um, outside of a budget cycle. But as long as you can demonstrate that that risk is fairly manageable, um, there's another video and we'll, we'll link to this um, in the notes here, um, just about how to manage risk and ring fence, th ring fence things a bit better if they are risky. Um, but as long as there is a decent management plan in place and the, the people who sign off risk versus budget decisions have have um, um, allocated that budget in the next budget cycle, that's usually as a good citizen, um, usually where, the, you know, the top five consultancies, your know, EMYs, your Accenture, that's really where they're going to look to get that um, risk managed down to effectively. So, so yeah, so don't think that every single piece of risk has to be solved now. Otherwise, everyone's all going to be uh, going to prison.
and on cybersecurity charges, it just doesn't work like that. But making sure that you can demonstrate that you've got good vulnerability assessment processes in place. Um, and obviously RoboShadow um, is a great platform to be able to do that. And making sure that each of those risks are being looked at on a business level and obviously a data protection level and making sure that you've got management capabilities in place. And it is as simple. Feel free to get in touch and we can send you examples of this. It is literally having a spreadsheet where you're list, listing out those vulnerabilities, what the business impact is, what the remediation is and the cost, and then making sure that that has made its way in the way of minutes to some kind of board level or risk versus cost discussion. So, and if what comes out of those is we're not spending the money now, but it is going to be in the next budget cycle, then you have done your job as a IT manager, IT director, head of IT, or a cybersecurity personnel, effectively. So hopefully that clears up um, a couple of elements about how to manage cybersecurity risk. Um, but as always, any questions, feel free to get in touch and we'll happily uh, walk through some of these scenarios in a bit more detail. So thank you for watching.